A new study finds that high-dose creatine improves cognitive performance in those with Alzheimer's disease. This is an eight-week pilot study, single arm. There was not a placebo group, so that's one limitation here of this study. But I think it's a really interesting study to talk about. This was part of the what's known as the CABA study. This is a creatine to augment bioenergetics in Alzheimer's disease, an eight-week single arm pilot study, as I mentioned, where investigators gave individuals who had clinically diagnosed and confirmed dementia, a subtype of Alzheimer's disease, 20 grams of creatine monohydrate every single day over the course of eight weeks and had before and after standardized assessments to assess cognitive performance. And we're gonna dive into the details. The title of this paper is Creatine Monohydrate Pilot in Alzheimer's Feasibility Brain, Creatine and Cognition. This was published by University of Kansas a Medical Center. And I, want, I really wanna explore a few different aspects of this study. What I think was really interesting is 20 grams per day, of course, is a super physiologic dose that some people would characterize as a loading phase dose. But the investigators, their hypothesis was that taking a super physiologic dose of creatine in individuals who were diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and had elevated levels of plasma phosphorylated tau T17 protein, which you can test now at LabCorp and so forth. And this this will help to uh, histologically, you know, ascertain by way of the plasma whether or not someone is at risk for developing future dementia and Alzheimer's disease. When these individuals had the diagnosis uh, and they took the creatine before and after eight weeks, and there was a standardized uh, battery of standardized tests, including what's known as the fluid cognition composite test, working memory test, the oral reading test, as well as the flanker test, there was statistically significant before and after differences in this study. There was also an 86% increase in brain creatine levels, and there was also a small increase in serum creatinine, which I think is important to talk about. But before we go on and dive into these nitty gritty details, I just wanna thank you for being here. Hopefully you're enjoying the content. If you are, please hit that like button and share this video with a friend who has the perception that creatine is just relegated for bodybuilders and fitness personnel and so forth. This is a tool, a well-validated and safe dietary supplement that can not only help with short-term high-intensity exercise performance, possibly improving strength, as well as hydration and hypertrophy, and possibly now brain health. There's a large dossier of literature to show that high doses of creatine can be helpful in the context of sleep deprivation and jet lag, possibly those with mental health issues, and now cognitive health issues because creatine is postulated to improve mitochondrial function. And so if you wanna optimize creatine levels and supplement with creatine in your diet, the best source of that is the raw material from Germany known as creatine. Pure, made by Allschem Biotech, and that's the only creatine that Myoscience offers. And you now have access to a high potency purified Crea Pure creatine monohydrate in a 60 gram container at five grams of creatine monohydrate per serving. Now, you might not know this, but most of the creatine that you buy on the internet are sourced from China. It's like an 80% material. It's not the cleanest in the world. Crea Pure is like a 97% purified creatine out, and it's one of the most easy to use, best tasting, and highly purified creatine out there. And that's why at Mile Science, that's the only creatine that you're gonna get that we offer to customers because it's the best in the world. So if you wanna save, you can go to myoscience.com or click the link in the description below and use the code podcast to save on the cleanest and most purified creatine in the world. That is the Crea Pure raw material. Now, getting back to the study, I think this is a really interesting study and we're just gonna dive right into it and go right into the serum creatinine because there was a case study in a nephrology journal back in the early 2000s where an individual who had chronic kidney disease, we're not really sure if he had diabetic chronic kidney disease or heavy metals like lead mercury or you know amalgam fillings or some such, but he had really high levels of serum creatinine and was expressing symptoms of chronic kidney disease and kidney failure. And upon inspection, you know, the doctors were asking him questions. Do you take any drugs, any supplements? He said, well, I do take creatine. And that was written up in this case report as a reason behind why he had high serum creatinine levels. I think his uh, levels were, I don't know, in the six or seven, the levels are milligrams per deciliter. And so the doctors were like, oh my gosh, well, this is why you have high serum creatinine because you take creatine. Well, now we have many different studies finding that taking even bolus doses of creatine doesn't increase serum creatinine to uh, extraordinary levels. And so what you might notice is in this table two here, the serum creatinine went from 0.94 milligrams per deciliter to just 1.25 milligrams per deciliter. Now that would be considered the threshold or the cut point for serum creatinine is 1.1. So on most tests, that would be in the high level, but most 
even kidney specialists would not even be concerned about assumed creatinine at 1.25 milligrams per deciliter. So even in these really deconditioned, more elderly type patients that are expressing symptoms of dementia and have histologically the elevated levels of, as I mentioned, the plasma phosphorylated tau T17, that's the protein that we can use to assess if dementia is uh, starting to brew in the, in the background, you, you know, 20 grams a day didn't even increase simcreatinine that much in these individuals. So that's important to recognize. And there were no other statistically significant shifts in blood urea nitrogen or other kidney function tests. So even eight weeks at a bolus dose of 20 grams per day, which I don't honestly recommend for most people. If you have jet lag or you're traveling to Europe or you, know, you have a newborn child and you're not getting any sleep, I mean, I would suggest high doses of creatine to help to ameliorate the cognitive deficits that are incurred from sleep deprivation. But most people don't need super physiologic levels of creatine. In that uh, context, if you've been a vegan or vegetarian and you are new to creatine, perhaps taking a bolus dose, 10, 20 grams a day for two to four weeks could be helpful to saturate your creatine levels so that you notice some benefits and then go back down to three to six grams a day. That's what most people uh, need. Now, what was interesting is using the standardized testing from this so-called NIH dementia toolbox. And what I thought was really Im impressive here was the oral reading recognition test. There was a statistically significant increase uh, in before and after between group differences in all of the subjects in this single arm pilot study took the creatine. But before and after uh, the eight week intervention, there was improvements in that test as well as the short term working memory and the the flanker inhibitory control attention test, there was also significant differences there. And total cognition improvements, sort of aggregating all these different metrics was improved as well. And there was a statistically significant difference between baseline and after the end of the intervention. Now, what I think is, is most impressive here is the 86% increase in brain creatine levels. Uh, I think that's, that's quite impressive and we would suspect that. So there's that. Now, you might be wondering, well, what is the mechanistic basis here? How would supraphysiologic levels of creatine improve cognition? Well, the investigators postulate based upon other literature that creatine helps with mitochondrial function in the brain. They go on to say that the potential benefits may be conferred through several bioenergetic mechanisms, including increasing the creatine to phosphocreatine ratios, reducing oxidative stress, and reducing inflammation. In contrast to one preclinical study, Gender did not influence the cognitive results in our study. However, these uh, possible differential effects should continue to be considered and investigated because it's been well recognized. And this is yet another paper that we're going to do a deeper dive on later. Uh, this is titled Creatine in Women's Health, Bridging the Gap from Menstruation Through Pregnancy to Menopause. And there's a lot of really good images here and uh, some statistics that I think are worth pointing out here that women have 20% lower synthesis rate for creatine. And uh, dietary sources are actually lower because women generally don't eat as, as much red meat as, as men. Uh, so on average, women consume between 30 and 40% less dietary creatine. And of course, this can affect all sorts of aspects when it comes to the uh, female specific parts of, of the physiology, including bone density, mitochondrial biogenesis, cellular hydration, mood, calcium kinetics, they say, and fast twitch muscle fiber preservation over time. So although this study did not notice any gender specific differences when it comes to creatine, they do postulate that the purported health benefits may be even more so for women compared to men. So I think it's fair to say that people over the age of 65 that are experiencing mild cognitive impairment or symptoms related to dementia should consider creatine as a supplement. Uh, and I you know, when you think about it, uh, most elderly people are not eating red meat or getting sufficient amounts of creatine anyway. And we know that the creatine plays a role in cellular energy production. It's not just relegated to fitness and bodybuilding. There is other uh, health benefits when it comes to mental health as well. So what do you think, my friends? I appreciate you tuning all the way to the very end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video study breakdown and we'll catch you on a future video down the road. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comment section and we'll catch you later.